Happy Homebrew Wednesday. It has been a while since I've actually made a proper video, or a couple of live videos, um, but not actually had time to do any kind of proper video, sitting down, editing, anything. Been away quite a bit. Been on holidays, basically, let's just say that. So that includes being actually on holiday and then just away with work and away with for leisure, leisure, all that stuff. So as a homebrew Wednesday, I've got to have a homebrew, right? There it is there. Now I know it's not I know it's not going right to the top, but um it's the end of the keg and it was a bit fizzy, a bit foamy, so we just let it go. So I thought as it's the end of the keg, I never do a brew day video on this, so I thought as it's the end of the keg I may as well do a little quick review on it. So this is um a dark Czech lager and it is Cousin Jesse, I've called it. Cousin Jesse because the original the original recipe actually came from Southern Jesse by Luke Stevens. Now, um, obviously I have added all the dark grains and stuff, but I've kind of tried to keep it close, the hoppage and stuff, which is basically hop with these kind of goldings. Um, so, so I've tried to keep it within... I've tried to keep it within the spec of BGSCP. So the BGSCP says, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it says a rich, dark, multi check lager with a roast character that can vary from almost absent to quite prominent. Multi with an interesting and complex flavor profile with variable levels of hopping, providing a range of possible interpretations. So that is nicely vague. That is very um, unhelpfully vague. So yeah. So what does it taste like anyway? What does it smell like? We've got lots to get through, so let's just do this. So you can definitely get a little bit of the, the dark green off it. It's like a little bit of coffee. And there's a little There's actually a bit of it's like a little spicy note or something like that, like hot spice or something. Which I'm guessing is the hops, which is these Kent Goldings, so that's normally floral, so that's a surprise. But that's kind of what I'm getting. Maybe a little, little tiny touch of caramel. Um, I think it would be nicer if it didn't have that kind of spicy note to it. Whatever that is. But definitely getting a little touch of coffee. It's not terrible. It's not horrible. Like, but it's okay. Anyway, going in. It's pretty smooth. The body is kind of medium to light. Now, um, it is supposed to be like a medium body. So that is good. The light just makes it easier to drink. So it's quite smooth going down. Not quite stout levels of smooth, but maybe like a, I don't know, like a half, half a porter, whatever half a porter is, not sure. It's like one and a half brown eels. The flavor. The flavor's okay. This is version one. I always wanted to do. I wanted one of my beers for this year was a, doing a dark lager. That is a dark lager. So that's one checked off. I think this is version one of it. I'm not sure it's quite where it needs to be. You are getting that kind of a little bit, a little touch of chocolate or something on the on the taste. So I'm thinking in version two we'll drop the East Kent Goldings and we'll go with. I think a little bit of um, American citrus hops. No cascades. I know cascades a bit boring, but I mean, something like that. And we'll see how it turns out. But um, I think it's okay. I definitely think it's okay. Um, and definitely there's something there to work for, for version two. But anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about the London Craft Beer Festival. So I've just got back, or just got back last night. Um, I thought, well, it's fresh in my head. I'll do a video on it. 
and just let you know what it was like. So, um, I've been going to this for, I don't know, when was the first one? 2017, 2016, something like that, 2017. Uh, we went like three years in a row. It seemed to grow and grow and um, then everything stopped for COVID. I was like, everything else stopped. And then it came back last year. I didn't go to it last year. It was a bit too soon. But I wasn't going to miss it this year. Because it is. It's a fantastic day out. If you haven't been. It, I would definitely recommend you do it at least once. Because. And if you like beer. If you like beer. If you don't like beer. What the hell are you watching this channel for? But um, if you like beer. It's definitely somewhere to go. It should be on the bucket list. There's our glass from this year. Now we nearly got caught out. As we were walking into the place um they were giving out the little small glasses that they had like two years ago and someone spied the ones at the other side of the door and then um, we all just immediately ditched the little small ones and straight over to that side to get that one so that's good so that's definitely bigger so there you are 10 years of the of craft london craft beer sponsored by what does that say FYT something, don't know. But yeah, nice little glass. Um, it was a really warm day. I mean, bloody hell, the weekend was just ridiculous heat. Um, we met up for breakfast as usual, and then went over. We were there about half an hour early, and we had to queue up and stand in blazing heat, like a bloody furnace. It was beating down on us no shade whatsoever and and um, by the time we got in we were just a sweaty mess and desperate for a drink but we survived and um so the whole place is like the very first time it was in it's in the place called the tobacco docks which is like an old warehouse and um, presumably where they brought in the tobacco from overseas and processed it or stored it or something i don't know but the whole place is just an amazing. It's been converted into like a kind of exhibition center type thing, event place, both indoor and outdoor at the same time, if that makes sense. So um, there's like outdoor bits so they can have food and barbecue stuff. And there's also the indoor stuff. So there's like little kind of rooms. There's rooms basically where you can go to. So if it's pissing down or rain, then they can do everything downstairs in the rooms or whatever. And then they have all the walkways and stuff going past and they've got all kind of the stalls there as well too. It's just, it is, it is a fantastic place that they've got. And there is so much room. But the first time I went, it was almost, it was, I'm pretty sure most of the stuff, if not all the stuff was downstairs. And then the second year I went there, it was, some of the stuff was upstairs, the food stuff and all was upstairs. And this time was like a lot more the kind of brewing stuff was upstairs now whether that was something to do with covid and they were trying to space everything out a bit more i don't know but it worked really well and it just meant that there was less because there was loads and loads and loads of people there and it just means that you're there's less people all crying around the same place at any one time so which is good and then in terms of the beer so the beer there was lots of um, IPAs, I think IPA is probably the most popular one obviously but after that there wasn't as many sour beers as I thought there was a few not as many, Fru a lot of fruit beer as well, there wasn't very many dark beers in terms of like normal kind of stouts and porters and whatnot. and um, there was a few but it was mainly, I suppose with the weather though like they were probably thinking ahead but uh, there was lots and lots of lagers I noticed as well which is makes a change. I suppose lager is the new thing, isn't it? So that might explain that. I try to take a mental note. This is hard when you're, you know, when you're drinking from like half eleven to take a mental note of all the good ones. But I did really try and took some photographs and stuff so I wouldn't forget. And there was some, some really outstanding beers, I have to say. A lot of it, though, was kind of, it was all kind of IPA. When I say IPA, I mean like West Coast IPA. There's West Coast IPAs. 
there's American Paleos, there's New England IPAs, and I'm kind of putting them all together, even though they're not, because when you've had a couple, it all kind of tastes the same. It tastes like that kind of general homogenous IPA taste, if you know what I mean. Um, so there's not really anything that's grabbing you. No, there's not one flavour in it that's really grabbing you and getting your attention. It's kind of just all tastes the same, sort of. So there was a few of them that actually noticed that were different from the rest, and they're kind of the ones that I spotted. So um, in terms of the... In terms of, like, just a normal IPA and stuff, the one I, I noticed was... The one I liked probably the most was there's one called a, a Futurist Session IPA from Saren. That was very nice in terms of just like a straight, um, uh, like an IPA type thing. That was probably the one. There was also one from Wiper and True, which was uh, just a standard like Talus Pale Ale. Now, I don't know that there was anything other than Talus on it. I love Talus, okay, so that's probably why it's in there. But I thought that was fantastic as well. Really loved that. No, Talus is not for everyone. I'm gonna be honest in saying that. It has it has some notes, um, which people don't like. Uh, and that one there, it said on the description about them um, coconut and stuff like that. And I was like, I have brewed Talus beers and single Talus beers loads and loads of times, and I've never got coconut on it. And I drunk it. And sure enough, the coconut was there, that kind of creamy coconut taste, and I was just like, what? What? How how are they getting it, but I can't? How is that? I'm not entirely sure, so. But I did really like that. Um, in terms of, they also actually, while I'm on it, they also had, they also had two Imperial Stouts. And one was like, uh, it was the same beer, but one had been aged in like a peated whiskey barrel, and one had been aged in another barrel, and I can't remember what it was. It, it was maybe a bourbon barrel, I think. But I had the peat one, and I thought that was absolutely fantastic as well. Never had the, never got round to having the bourbon one, which is a shame, and I've kind of regretted that since. So the other really outstanding ones were um, the, the fruited beers. So there was a, there was one called a triple fruit goza from North Brewing or North Brew Co or whatever they're called. North, let's just call them. And I tried it the last time I was at the festival and I really loved it. Tried it again this time, really loved it. It has this kind of it's this intense red color and it has a real sweet and sour thing going on you really sweet from the fruit and then the sourness on the end and it just works so beautifully well it's not, it's a goza so it's not really really sour um because i'm not really into insane, insanely sour beers but that one's absolutely fantastic funnily enough i tried i tried the same beer at one of the beer festivals in newcastle in 20, probably 2019 I think and it was a different beer altogether it was different fruit they used it was I don't want to say I was really disappointed but I think I was slightly disappointed and I was thinking have they done something to the recipe or whatever and then I tried it that time with the Newcastle one in my in the head and um, yeah it was just this was the one that I tasted the last time in London so it was bloody fantastic um, so in terms of other fruit beers, then we had, there was a, it was a, a Le Chouf. So there was that one. They had their own little kind of uh, room. It's bloody, it was really warm in there. And like, I feel sorry for the people who had to work behind the bar in there all the time. Cause there was nowhere at all, but they had, they had the normal Le Chouf and they had the cherry version and I had the cherry version. It was like 8%. It was bloody amazing. It was absolutely amazing. Probably one of the best beers I had the entire day. Um, and I would have had it more only the fact that it was like 8%. Another cherry beer 
was, I think it was Vocation that did it. I think, I think it's called Death by Cherries, I think. And you could either get it normal or you get it like with a, like a slushy version of it. I just got the normal version. And it was, it was, again, it was fantastic. I wouldn't say I'm a massive lover of cherries, but yeah, two of the best beers I had at the festival were cherry beers. So I'm thinking now that I should probably try and do something. I could get frozen cherries fairly easily and maybe try and make something with that. Um, but yeah, that was another superb beer, really. And then the other... I think in terms of fruit beer, that was that was, those three were the best, except for one. There was one that I really liked, and I think a reason why I like the fruit beers is because, as I was saying about the the IPAs early on, <clears throat> you're just um, it all kind of tastes the same after a while. So you want something to mix it up to change what you're tasting. You don't always want to drink the same bloody beer all the time. And there was one by Brew York. So I think Brew York were probably the, it seemed to be the, brewer, the the brewery that I went back to all the time when I was sneaking away from the rest of them so we could go back to Brew York and try the rest of the stuff. And they had one, Juice Forsyth it was called, and it was just like breakfast juice. It was fantastic, absolutely superb, really nice. I think it was just the perfect beer at the perfect time and because it, it was so warm I was sick of drinking IPAs and stuff, and yet this beer then comes along, we have it, and it's just like breakfast juice. So I think that's one of the best beers I had, and I think Brew York. They also had, uh, there was another couple I had, there was one called The Floor is Guava, which was like a coconut and guava beer, I think, but it was really good as well. They had an Imperial Stout called... Tiramisu, tiramisu something, but it was like an imperial coconut milk stout, something like that, and it was it was again it was sensational. Um, so I'm definitely gonna do something with coconut at some point this year. I'm thinking maybe like a coconut imp imperial stout or something for Christmas, or imperial porter or something like that. Maybe just a normal coconut porter. And yeah, because that's really got me into it now. And coconut works beautifully well, beautifully well in beer, but in dark beer as well, it just works fantastic. And then you get the the mouth feeling on it. Um. So on the list, let's see. Is there anything else I've forgotten? There is. Oh yeah, there was one dark beer that I really liked, which was I have um got loads of stickers and stuff. Which is, which is really what I was after. That's the way I pay the £50. So I can get loads of stickers. Because I, I put them on the fridge down here. And I've got one. I've got a big hole in the fridge. With like 2020 written on it. And um, yeah. Obviously it didn't get going. But I've got loads and loads of stickers to fill that hole. Yes. And more. But. As I was talking about. The beer. There is a sitting on top. Was this one here Anne's patch and hob day that's a that's an that's a good name yeah london black independent nitro porter 4.4 percent that was that was really good i have i've never seen that before i think it's probably only available in london i imagine uh but yeah i would really love to try that again if I can get it from somewhere, I don't know where, but I will have a look. But yeah, that was kind of the best of the dark beers I tried. I didn't try too many because I said there wasn't that many to try that weren't like 7% and above. And you know, on a day like that, I'm just trying to just trying to drink light beers, but also drink lots of water as well too. So I managed to drink lots of water during the day. And then I ended up the next day without a massive hangover as well too. Which is good. So yeah, so I've got loads of look, I've got loads of beer mats as well too. Because I'm making a, I'm making a beer mat wall. You can kind of probably see on that side. So I'm going up that side of the door and then that side of the door. So I have enough beer mats here to probably fill that side of the door. So that's a triumph. That is a triumph. So um, 
yeah, the only other thing then is that I did manage to get some freebies, but second hand freebies, okay. So I got these from Dudes Brews, got these from Richard. So they're hops, so somehow he managed to get hops. I think a couple of the other ones got hops as well. You just had to be in the right place at the right time to get the swag. Um, but I was too busy at Brew York, clearly. So we've got some Columbus, free sample of Columbus. And we've got some, oh, we've got some Sabro. Speaking of coconut, we've got Sabro. Citrus, coconut, herbal, stone fruit, tropical. Woohoo! Nice. Oh, well, this is embarrassing, isn't it? Okay, so something has happened. The video file, I think it's split it and I've accidentally deleted it. Or it just hasn't recorded. I'm not entirely sure which. But let's not worry about it. I... Pretty sure I droned on for another 5 or 10 minutes here, about God only knows what. So at least we're getting this wrapped up now. So I just want to say hello and thanks to everybody I met on the day. I'm not going to start naming names because it never turns out well. You will forget someone. I've made that mistake before and I'm not going to get tricked into it again. So yeah, just hello and I'll see you again same time next year. Uh, hopefully we'll see a few new faces as well too next year. But um, yeah, until then, I guess I'll go and I'll just say, uh, yeah, happy Homebrew Wednesday. I shall see you next week with a brewing video as well too. Ooh, amazing. <laughs>